Hey everybody, so today I'll be discussing a power solution for the Fujifilm X-T30 as well as the other Fujifilm X-T3 and the upcoming Fujifilm X-T4. And this allows you to use the camera for extended periods of time when recording video or shooting sports and also helps to curb the overheating issue which you can find inside the X-T30 by a little bit. And this also allows you to use an external monitor or recorder on the X-T30 which otherwise would not be possible if you're powering it off a power bank because the micro HDMI port is right next to the USB-C and you can only use one or the other unless you cut off part of your cable. So the Fujifilm X-T30 uses the same 26.1 megapixel sensor you can find inside the X-T3 and the upcoming X-T4 and this gives you amazing oversampled 4K video with great dynamic range and great color reproduction. However, this has a couple downsides. Now the sensor used inside these cameras is a non-traditional X-Trans4 array, which looks something like this. And the traditional sensor array on older cameras like the X-T2, the X-H1, and basically everything else so far is known as a bear array, which looks something like this. And one downside of this color filter array is the higher processing requirements to decode the light data that the sensor captures. Because of this, the camera needs more power to process that information, and this results in more heat. That's normally not an issue on bodies like the X-T3 and the X-T4, which are more rugged and have a bigger body to dissipate the heat. However, on cameras like the X-T30, which is what I'm filming on right now, this can be a major issue in 4K video because your camera will start to overheat in about 35 minutes of recording and shut down shortly after that. The internal batteries inside the camera give you about 45 minutes of record time on 4K, which isn't really that much. You would have to carry multiple batteries from Fujifilm, which are quite expensive, around $75 to $85 a piece. And so this video will help you find a solution for that problem. So to power the camera, there's a few things you need to have on hand. And anything I talk about, I'll have links in the description down below so you can go get them yourself. Um, so the first thing you'll need is a dummy battery and now what this is is basically it's a hollow battery in the shape of your internal one and it terminates in a DC plug which allows you to plug in a power bank or any DC power source into the camera to power it for extended periods of time. And I have a kit that I got from a company which I'll leave in the description below that came with the power bank as well as the next item I'll talk about. So the second thing you need is a USB DC drive cable. Now what this is, is basically a mini transformer, which will step up the voltage from most power banks, which usually output five volts to the voltage you need for the camera. Now most consumer cameras require between 7.2 to 8.8 .8 volts, which this X-T30 follows in line with. And that transformer is basically within that range. And what this allows you to do is power the camera off of a power bank if you're trying to record for a longer period of time. Now the one thing you have to note is that you must use a power bank that outputs five volts and three amps if you want to use it for video. The power bank I used previously only outputted 5 volts and 2 amps which would cause the camera to shut off when recording video so that's something you have to keep in mind. I have links in the description below for anything that you might want to take a look at. The one I'm using right now is from a company called Ugreen and this Ugreen power bank is a 10,000 milliamp power one which is really compact. It supports USB-C power delivery which is 9 volts and 2 amps so you can use it to power like your iPad Pro or any other devices. And it also outputs 5 volts and 3 amps over the USB-A port, which is essential if you want to use this camera for video using a power bank. I'm actually using that exact setup right now to record this part of the video. And the third thing you'll need is a power bank holder. What this is is basically a strong clamp, which is almost like a phone holder. And it's a little more durable to hold a power bank. And most of these you can get are from Small Rig, or the one I use right now is from a company called Yuyu Rig. This has two quarter 20 screws on the back and mine came with two Allen screws which I can screw into like a cage. And this allows you to hold the camera and the power bank and mount it to the hot shoe or a cage or an L bracket of that sort or on a tripod if you use something like that. My current solution right now is to use a L bracket from small rig. This small rig L bracket has a little mounting plate on the left side of the camera which allows you to screw in accessories and the power bank holder I'm using has two quarter 20 screws which line up perfectly with that L bracket and I can screw them in and have a power bank attached to it and this actually makes the power bank a very comfortable side handle. I went on a full day shoot in Toronto and I held the camera by that side grip the whole day. I barely even touched the main grip because it was that comfortable to hold and it adds a nice stable platform if you're planning to use it for handheld video which is why I think it's a great option to have. In terms of how long this will last, it depends on the power bank you have. The one I'm using is a 10,000 milliamp hour one, 
and I haven't tested it out to its limit. However, I did do about 35 minutes of 4K video at 200 megabits per second. And the power bank only drained about maybe 20% in that time frame. So if you're looking to record for a long period of time, this power bank is a great option. And they're relatively inexpensive compared to Fujifilm batteries. A Fujifilm battery is around 1200 million hours and you'll get about 45 minutes of video. Whereas this power bank is around $30 Canadian and I can get about a couple hours of video off of it. You can spend a little bit more and get double the capacity. However, the size does increase quite a bit. So it's up to you on what you decide to do with this solution. Now, the other option you have is to use the camera with something called a blind spot power junkie. I'll have links for that in the description below. But what this is, is basically a battery plate that has a DC output and a mounting plate for a Sony NPF battery. Sony NPF batteries are very versatile batteries which you can find on film sets and they're used to power lights, monitors, any kind of accessories you'd mount on a camera. So they're very easy to use. They come in multiple capacities from tiny ones you'd mount on like a light to massive ones depending on your power requirements. And they have the correct voltage already coming out of the battery which is around 7.2 to 8 volts. 7.4 is the average voltage that this camera needs. And that battery outputs directly into the DC or input of the dummy battery. You can just plug that in straight to the camera and it'll power the, uh, that as long as the NPF battery lasts. It's got my power bank attached to the side and I can use it as a side handle. Now the great thing about this power bank is it's got a power readout. So if I plug in this cable, it indicates how much power is remaining. That way you always have an indicator because when you're powering the camera with this system, it does not give you an accurate power readout. All you're gonna see is a little plug symbol there. I like this power bank because it gives you a number readout instead of four dots compared to something like this here. It just gives you four dots as a power indicator. Now the one thing to watch out for, this power bank outputs five volts and three amps. Not sure if you can see that. That's very important because the voltage can be between 7.2 and 8.8 .8 volts. However, the current also needs to be within around one amp. So when the transformer steps it up, it needs to have enough current to do that. My old power bank, which is this one here, it did not do well for video. It would shut off when I started recording, when I do burst shots or two shots consecutively, my power bank would cause the camera to shut off. And with something like this, I can do eight frames per second, mechanical shutter, no problem. Now it does shut off in burst shooting once in a while, but in video, I've never had it shut off even after like 35 minutes of 4K video at the highest quality preset. And if I take this tripod off, reduces the weight a good amount and I can hold it with this all day long. Very comfortable system overall. And if I take this power bank off, power off the camera. This is the power bank I have from Ugreen, very compact. And this is the holder for the power bank. It's from a company called UU Rig. It has a quarter 20 screw in the back, which you can use to mount stuff here. And this is the cable system. So it's coming out from a d uh, dummy battery, which is right here. So if I open this door up, it's this little battery right here. Looks like this. And it terminates in a DC power plug like this one. And so anything you plug into that with the appropriate power supply will be able to power your camera. So put it back, lock it up. And I can just put the power bank back in. Plug the cable in, cables in, power the camera on. And right there, it's in burst mode. You can switch it to video, I'll switch it to the maximum quality. 
let's do DCI 4K at 200 megabits per second. And now, you can start recording. Now you can see the timer is running, and it's recording video no problem. I can test out the continuous autofocus. And it's doing that as well, no problem. And you can use this as a run and gun setup. Very comfortable grip, as you can see, I'm holding it like this. So that'll be all for this video. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll try and respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.